Greetings, viewers, and welcome to another episode of The Collection Crib. I am your host, Tyler Cloud. Today, we're going to be looking at my entire Thomas the Tank Engine collection that was released by a company called Ertl. Now, the company released these toys around the late 80s, and they discontinued in the early 2000s. These were my first ever toys growing up. I mean, you want to talk about probably the first, you know, outside of the traditional baby toys, but... Really, this was like my childhood wrapped in a big ball. Like from the ages three to, I don't know, five or six, this was it. Before Star Wars and any of the other action stuff came into my life. Like Thomas was it. Like what was more cooler as a kid than collecting trains with faces on it? <laughs> all different kinds of trains from different sizes, different shapes. And they all had their own different stories on the island of Sodor. Great memories. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ram off every single engine and uh, diesel, steamer, and cart that I got. Give like a tiny little bit of history. Not, you know, not going to ramble, but just kind of give uh, just a little characterization of each uh, each train and what they kind of meant to me as a kid and as a series as a whole. So let's start off with, of course, number one himself, the, the, uh, the be-all, the end-all, the featured attraction, Thomas himself. His six wheels, his cheeky little engine, short stumpy dome, whatever. Number one, happy. And what's interesting about this is that um, these versions were not the original Ertl. The original Ertl toys actually had like flat sticker faces. They didn't have like this oval, um, you know, the, tr the actual uh, Thomas faces you see in the shows today. Like they had these weird stickers. Maybe I'll put like a picture right here. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Just like a flat Thomas sticker. It looks kind of odd. Like, how can you not picture it looking like this? But, yeah, the, the toys have aged over time. The paint's kind of come off a little bit, and the stickers are kind of peeling. But you just hook the, the Thomas trains up to the little hooks back here, and they run on wheels. And they're just so classic. I mean, you don't need rails. All you need is a flat surface, and they just... You know, choo-choo on your table. <laughs> I love these toys. They're so great. So let's move on from number one, Thomas, to number two, Edward. Edward, of course, his interesting shape and his frame there. He was always called the iron... What was it? The old iron? I almost said iron knuckle. <laughs> the old iron. He was one of the oldest engines, and uh, he always kind of broke down or stuff like that. But he, was, he always stayed positive, and he always uh, delivered his... Work on time. Really cool uh, frame here. And he and James kind of have a similar build. When I get to James, I'll compare the two. But nothing bad to say about Edward. What can you say? Anything negative about Edward? He was always good guy. Always the good one. Really good. Good engine. Two blue engines. And then we come to number three, who would be green. And that is Henry. Now, this is the second version of Henry. If you're familiar with the Thomas uh, canon, there was a story called the Flying Kepper that Henry had to pull in the middle of the night. It was a snowy night, too, and uh, Henry crashed, and that ruined his frame. And it ruined his engine. It was rounded right here, and I think it was a little bit rounded on the back here, too. And Sir Topham Hatt had to give him a new, uh, a new frame. So this is what we got from that construction. Instead of a rounded triangular uh, part right here, we got a more boxy part. I'm horrible with train name spots, so leave a comment down below because I'm horrible. Boiler, steamer, help me out here. <laughs> but, all right, so let's move on to number four, and that is the biggest one himself, the one who wants to try to pass 100 miles an hour, Gordon. The king himself, the man, the man, what am I saying? He's an engine. <laughs> the train who couldn't get up the hill, and then Edward had to push him. And after that, they named the hill after him. Stubborn, proud, and I would say he had a pretty huge rivalry with Thomas in the first season. And then I think they kind of made up in the end of that season. And I think from there, Thomas and Gordon were always pretty tight. But yeah, big, long, coal. Uh, how many wheels? Oh, God. I don't know if I want to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 wheels. So, whew. 
the longest express train ever. Gordon can pull, goes 100 miles an hour if he could. Mm, the beast. The beast of Isle in the Sodor. And now we come to my favorite color, but not my favorite engine, James. The red engine, who of course is always angry, always, well not always angry, but he just likes to do things his, his way. He's just always pissy and, you know, takes way too much pride in himself, even more than the Gordon. But who can forget the episode when uh, he got stung by bees and then the bees stung his nose and uh, he tried to catch up with Edward in that uh, old Iron episode. Or actually, no, Edward tried to catch up with him because James was out of control. He didn't have a driver. Then Edward's like, I'm coming. And they both hooked onto each other and like, oh, I'm, I'm so happy you're, you're okay. <laughs> but yeah, look at these two. Like they both have really almost similar uh, shapes and frames in their, uh, in their design. Like they got like that foot um, entrance there and their coal chamber is kind of the same. I think they got the same amount of wheels. Um, Edward's got four small ones in the front and James only has two while he's got the six bigger ones on the bottom and Edward only has four. So it's kind of neat, kind of unique uh, built here. It's kind of like Edward came first and then James was like the improvement. It's like uh, the, the White Star Line Titanic ships. Like the Olympic came first and then Titanic kind of made it a little better, even though it did sink. But, <laughs> but yeah, James, uh, bossy, stubborn, proud. Love the color. Not my favorite engine, but he's been in a lot of good episodes and definitely one of the more memorable of the bunch. And then we got our next tank engine, Percy, the little green engine who kind of gets a mixed rap. But I always loved him when he first came into the uh, to the airwaves. Like for me, like when he first debuted, when he came under that cloth, like it was really cool. He had some really memorable episodes. Um, he would get heavily featured in the later seasons, like seasons two and three, and really had a real huge spotlight on great episodes. But look at his face. A little cross-eyed there. A little, little goofy, a little out there, but looks pretty good shape. Four wheels, little tank engine, paint, or uh, his sticker's kind of peeling off a little bit, but looks pretty good shape. One of the better uh, conditioned ones next to James and the uh, the ones so far. Let's move on to number seven, and that is Toby, the uh, tram steam engine. Toby had a really, uh, really good episode starter. He, uh, I forget the branch line he was running, but it was closing down, and it just felt like nobody wanted him. It was kind of a personal story. Like, I almost kind of, kind of grasp or attach to Toby's story. Like, the episode almost felt very uh, quiet. There was no, hardly any music, unless there was, like, happy moments, but... It just felt very somber, very sad. And then when they said, and then the, his driver says, hey, Toby, you might be going to the Island of Sodor. Like, it was really a happy moment. Toby really got a good episode. And he would, of course, have some good episodes with Mavis, who we'll get to. But amazing moment for Toby. Amazing uh, episodes that he would have. And, of course, he would be without Henrietta, his uh, his his little coach. Originally, Sir Topham Hat wanted it to be a hen house, and Toby's like, uh-uh. But you rarely see Toby without Henrietta. It's like Linus from Charlie Brown. You rarely see Linus without his blanket. We come to the number eight steam engine, and technically he's a tank engine, but he is my favorite steam engine slash character on Thomas of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Western engine himself, number eight, Duck. Duck is my favorite. His frame, his design, his character, his little waddle as he moves. Everything about him is so special. I love Duck. An amazing tank engine. Has such a great story. And the trilogy that he has with Diesel is phenomenal. One of my favorite Thomas episodes. Um, look, he's kind of looking over to the right. Really cool. Little, little, little bit of paint coming off, but... One of the better Thomas ones I have that's in pretty good condition. God, I love Duck. My favorite. Like, when I saw Thomas, I thought he was like, okay, you know, okay show. But when I saw Duck, I don't know, I just quickly attached to him right away. Like, when he debuted and he and Percy were trying to hold off the, the other three engines from entering and, you know, from bullying them all the time. And Duck set them straight. You know, Duck didn't take no bullcrap. 
you know, he only listens to Sir Topham Hatt and nobody else. And that's pretty, uh, pretty noble of Duck. I like him. He's a good guy. Good engine. Good Great Western Railway engine. My favorite goes on the top of my list of favorite um, Mr. Tank Engine characters if I ever do a list. Um, just such a great, great character. Great stories and... When they introduced Emily in the later Thomas series and they replaced Duck. Oh, was I angry. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the twins. But before I do, let's introduce our helicopter, Harold, who's sitting on top of both Donald and Douglas. Hey, everybody, I'm just staying to look pretty. I've got to go to a hospital. Check you later. <laughs> but yeah, Harold... Really cool. He's like one of the more harder uh, figures of the bunch. He is pure metal, except for his um, propeller on his on his top there. Uh, loyal to the end, very friendly, and he raced Percy that one time. Um, one of the few vehicles non train related in the island of Sodor. Uh, he picked up so many passengers to take him to hospitals and whatnot, even to you know railways. Very loyal, very helpful. A hero to the end. Harold the Hero. See you, everybody. <laughs> really cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now let's move on to the twins. One of my favorite, another favorite characters of mine. Donald and Douglas, the long black number nine, number ten trains. Not as long as Henry or Gordon, but they are definitely long, considering they're both twins. Put them together. Oh, my goodness. But it's like the World Trade Center. May not be long, but when you put them together, holy crap. <laughs> but yeah, Donald and Douglas, the Scottish twins. Um, not too much to say about their design. I'll just use Douglas, just, you know, they both look the same besides their name and number. But uh, a lot of square, a lot of rectangles. Um, not too much to see since it's all black except for like the red, um, red frame part here. Losing a little bit of paint there. But yeah, Donald and Douglas had a couple good episodes. They saved Thomas out of this uh, building one time. Uh, actually, Douglas saved Oliver, who I do not have in my collection. I am looking to find Oliver. That would be a great addition to my collection. Another great Western uh, addition next to uh, Duck and another one I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But yeah, Donald and Douglas, one of my favorites. They have pretty good episodes and... Who can, who can remember uh, when Donald crashed into that uh, into that one building and Sir Topham had had to send either him or Douglas away, and I guess depending on their work uh, ethic, but really good engines. I love Donald and Douglas. Great, great builds. Their accents are funny because of, you know, Ringo Starr and George Carlin narration. <laughs> who can forget them? And speaking of twins, now we come to tank engine twins, Bill and Ben. Now, these guys have definitely seen way better days, especially Bill. Oh, my God. It looks like somebody tried to vandalize him. Uh, four wheels, couple of funnels, paint needs work. Oh, my goodness. Even his eye. Oh, my God. Somebody chopped off his eye. <laughs> no. Ch uh, chipped his eye, I mean. But but Ben's seen a little bit better. Um, his paint's still kind of coming off, but... Uh, you know, it's the fact he has like that little door in there and you can see right through. It's kind of cool. Let me get in there a little bit. Hmm. I hardly see Balco. But yeah, the tank engine twins, really cool. Even though I could really, really use a, another pair. I could really use a different, um, version of these two. Cause yeah, the paint definitely has not aged well. These guys could use... A makeover for sure, but Bill and Ben, they've had some good episodes, especially when they meet Balco in the uh, the episode where Balco is introduced. So now we come to the end of the steamers, and now we move on to the diesels. And to start, let's start off with the big, not the big, but the bad one himself, Diesel. The Diesel of Diesels, Diesel. And his face looks horrible <laughs> oh man his needs a little face needs a little uh, face job there but other than that diesel had his uh iconic uh trilogy with duck 
one of my favorite stories and diesel bullied duck and tried to manipulate all the other engines from turning uh turning against duck really uh really interesting story but these two really had a great story but i don't know you just can't have a good duck story without diesel these two were like made for each other that's why i've always really liked their stories especially when he came back and they just say well diesel is useless but it's kind of interesting when you watch it as a kid, you never really understood the concept of diesels and steam engines because diesels were electric. They were the ways of the future. Steamers were what they were using, you know, for years and years and years because uh, the Island of Sodor stories, I think, were supposed to take place in like the 40s and the 60s, something like that. So diesel was like a, represent, a representation of the future because like whenever you see him on screen, he always talks about it like we're revolutionary. We're going to be the best and you guys will be nothing so what a dick <laughs> diesel's a dick so now let's go to bulko the long diesel oh my goodness what else can i say about bulko except that he is the longest diesel in the bunch happy legit cool he's not like a dick like the black diesel but man he's like the gordon of diesels for sure not much to say about him except uh, he's got 10 wheels, happy face, he's got windows that don't open, nice flat top. Um, can also hook up on the front and the back as well. The paint's pretty good and of course he's all mainly all metal. Like they're all metal but you can feel like how hard they are. Like remember Ertl's a company that mainly made tractor toys so it's kind of cool how they were able to cast like tractor vehicles, and train vehicles. And I wish they still made toys, but I guess Earl just sticks to what they know best, and that is farming equipment. Up next is Daisy, the female engine. Oh my goodness, I just realized she does not have a nose. <laughs> uh, yeah, I gotta find a better Daisy, but other than her nose job, uh, her design looks pretty slick, really cool. Um, there's actually a little bit of controversy with her. The creators did not like her uh, television appearance. And that's when they tossed her aside to make way for which I think was a smart move in terms of a female character, Mavis. Another Diesel and, uh, forgive me if I say this wrong, Farquader Quarry? <laughs> My, uh, leave a comment down below, I said that wrong. Uh, but yeah, Mavis is amazing. I like Mavis. Uh, slick, smooth. Smiley can be a little grouchy when she doesn't uh, have things going right, but then again, who does? I love the yellow on her. Uh, kind of introduction in the Diesel uh, series where they have like that black and yellow coating on them. But uh, yeah, um, definitely a smart move to replace Daisy with Mavis. Mavis definitely had a lot more going for her instead of Daisy, but definitely I like I like her design. Really cool, uh, really cool design. Good episodes, especially with Toby. And then Diesel, I think, even tried to manipulate her at one point. Uh, now we're gonna move on. Oh, actually, oh, there's one more. I almost forgot. There's one more Diesel. And he is the smallest of all. Ladies and gentlemen, Rusty. Now, Rusty came at a time when I was pretty much done with Thomas. Um, he's from a different steam line and i'm sorry i don't know the name leave a comment down below but uh, rusty is the smallest engine in the show he move the camera a little bit he is so small like watching him on the show he makes thomas look like a giant but rusty is cute i like his box frame his orange color and he's got like that little uh um, circle on the one side and the rectangle on the other really amazing design um cute Loyal, and he's got some good episodes. You ever take the time to watch his episodes? He's got some good highlights. But not much to say about Rusty, but it was at a time when, I think it was around season three, was when I was kind of growing out of Thomas and starting to move on to more mature stuff. But can't forget Rusty, though. He was he was the sign of, you know, things were changing and, you know, a lot of different things were coming. Um, all right, next, before I move on, let me kind of go around the other guys a little bit of the, the coaches and carts. We got the freight cars, all the laughters, you know, the, the silly cars. They would raise so much hell with the 
with the engines and cause accidents and all sorts of hell. Here we have Annie and Clarabelle. These are Thomas's loyal coaches. Um, I don't think they've really left Thomas's side except whenever he's in an accident or a delay happens. But uh, here are the Ted Mouth milk carts uh, filled with milk, not real milk. There's nothing in there. <laughs> And of course, we've got some ex um, express coaches pulled by Gordon or James. Not too much to say, just typical coaches that you pull. Uh, we got the Sodor Mail. I think James pulled this. I'm not 100% sure, but these are these are one of my favorites. I just like the color and like the big Sodor Mail on it. I don't know. It just looks it just looks cool. I just like the look of it. Really cool. Uh, really cool little train. Uh, here is the breakdown train. If we can recall, I believe James fell off the tracks from the uh, the freight cars, and Thomas brought the freight uh, the uh, the breakdown train to help get James back on the rails. So this thing was pretty cool to uh, to add in the in the uh, in the collection. Just because it's not you know it's not a character; it's just uh, working equipment. You you would think he had a face, you know, like other uh, working equipment later in the series would later have faces, but this one wouldn't. Wonder why? Maybe they scraped it off. <laughs> I don't know. And last but not least, before I move on to the other vehicles, we've got the dragon. Now this is not an Irwin toy. Um, this is like one of the uh, magnetic toys from two thousand three. Um, learning curve, I think. But I just wanted to include him just because I I really like the dragon. He had a good episode, you know, his introduction and it scared Percy. But he's magnetic, um, another series toy for another time. But I just wanted to include him because the other Chinese dragon from Earl is so expensive. Oy. I just wanted to include him. Maybe I'll put him on the breakdown train. It'll make him easier to, to hold there. There we go. <laughs> Come here, Percy. We need to, we need to get you uh, taken to the circus. Oh, do I? All right. Du -du -du. Ugh. Don't crash! <laughs> you crashed in the duck. Let's try it again. Okay, go ahead, take him away. <laughs> really cool. I love these toys. Really a lot of fun. A lot of fun memories with these. All right, so now I know this episode's gone over 25 minutes. I mean, with so many toys like this and so many memories, how could I not leave anything out? So let's try to wrap this up as fast as I can with the other vehicles. Let's start with. Toad. This is um, Oliver's Great Western um, van that came with him when he was saved by Douglas. Now, I need to find Oliver. If I ever find Oliver, I'll do like a quick standalone episode of, of Oliver. He's like Duck and Tom's combined. But Toad, I don't think he ever had any dialogue on the show. But just the fact that his name is Toad is hilarious. Awesome, awesome. And here we have Terrence the Tractor. His caterpillars is what saved Thomas out of that snowbank, and he's really hard to move. He's the only few and a uh, few characters in my pile that does not have wheels, but he just has like those rubber caterpillars. So you have to move himself because he doesn't really move well. You know, that's all. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yep, Terrence, loyal guy, saved Thomas in a pickle. Anybody gets caught, you know, he'll be there. He'll be there. He'll be there. <laughs> and the last two, ladies and gentlemen, in my Earl collection is um, Birdie the Bus. Birdie, uh, he, I think he may have seen better days. He looks okay, but I definitely think he could have done better. His wheels are missing. His rubber uh, tires are missing. Uh, definitely one of the older Birdie toys in my collection. Um, I need to find a new one of him, but he's cool. Except the fact, you know, he's missing his two tires. But other than that, he's happy. He had that famous race with Thomas. And if Thomas is in a pickle, in a, if Thomas is in a pickle, he'll pick up the passengers and, you know, he'll, he'll save the day. And last but not least, we have Bulgy, the double decker bus. And I almost said engine, <laughs> the double decker bus. He um he doesn't really have any regard for anybody until he hit that bridge and then he became a hen house, which kind of made him in disgrace and a joke. Looks pretty good, pretty good shape so far. Um his paint's on, stickers are still on, 
They're hanging on. A lot better condition than Birdie, but stubborn bus who gets so many chances but fails at being a bus. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for sticking this long. If you've seen all of this huge Ertl collection of Thomas, this has been an amazing trip down memory lane. Thomas the Tank Engine, Ertl Toys are an amazing collection. If you have children or if you have memories of Thomas and you just want to pick these guys up, please do so. These are some of the best Thomas toys that you will own today. These, I mean, they have like the, the battery powered ones and they have better toys, but these are memories that anyone can have and treasure, especially for the ones who grew up in the, the 80s and 90s. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for being a part of this almost 30 minute episode of The Collection Crib, and I will see you all next time. Thank <laughs> you.